Okay, welcome to Electro Online. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. I'm talking about equations, of course. We're going to change a polar equation into rectangular equation. And normally there's a special technique involved with that. Sometimes you're lucky and it's easy. Sometimes it's a little more, more difficult and you need some special technique to do so. Let's show you what some of those standard special techniques are. Well, first of all, let's take the first one and that's relatively easy because you have to recognize that the secant of theta is the same as one over the cosine of theta. So this can be written as r is equal to three times one over the cosine of theta. And then if I move the cosine of theta over to the left side here, we can say that r times the cosine of theta is equal to three. Now, of course, r times the cosine of theta, ah, that's equal to x. So we can say that x is equal to three, and that is the Cartesian or rectangular equivalent of the equation r is equal to three secant of theta. Which is interesting because if we graph this equation, which is easy to graph, of course, so here's our y-axis, there's our x-axis, and if we use a different color, let's use red here, x equals 3, that would be 1, 2, 3, right there. Then, of course, this line here represents x equals 3. And, of course, if this x equals 3, then this equation, this polar equation, also gives you this straight line. Of course, it would be a little bit more difficult to plug in various values for theta to realize that you get this straight line right here. Now, what that really means is that if the angle of theta is equal to 0, of course, the cosine of 0 is 1, and then r would be equal to 3. That means if the angle is 0, you'd end up over here. When the angle becomes, becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, notice you find different points on the graph like this. r would be getting bigger for larger and larger angles of theta. So you can graph the, the graph like this, or you can graph it like that. And again, you need to be able to go back and forth between the two. On the next equation, we have r equals 5 times the sine of theta. And say to yourself, well, how do I convert that to uh, Cartesian coordinates or, rec or rectangular coordinates? Well, you have to remember the definition that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, which means if we can somehow turn this into an r squared, we can then convert to x and y's. So we're going to then take that equation and multiply both sides by r, and if we do that, we get r squared on the left side is equal to 5 r times the sine of theta on the right side. And then you can take this and turn that into an x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 times r sine of theta. And then, of course, you realize that r sine of theta, that is equal to y, of course. And then you can say, well, this is equal to y, x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 times y. Then we can bring the 5y to the left side, so x squared plus y squared minus 5y is equal to 0. Now leave a little bit more room here because now what we're going to do is employ a technique of, for example, finding the perfect square of this quantity right here. So what I'm thinking about here, here, is to find a perfect square, which means I'm going to take half this coordinate, or half this coefficient, divide by 2, or that is taking half of it, of course, so minus 5 divided by 2, squared, and add it to both sides. So 5 half squared would be plus 25 over 4. Since I added to the left side, I'm going to have to add it to the right side as well. But now I have a perfect square here, so I can write this as x squared plus the quantity y minus 5 over 2 quantity squared is equal to, uh, let's see here, is equal to 25 over 4. And so now this looks like a circle that has been offset. The radius would be the square root of this, which is 5 divided by 2. And then if I were to graph this, um, let me just do it right underneath here. Notice the center of the circle would be at x equals 0 and y equals 5 halves. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, that would be right there. So and the, the radius circle is 5 divided by 2, which is 2 and a half. So that means that the circle would be right here. So this is the graph of this equation right here, which therefore this is the graph of this equation right there. r equals 5 sine theta is a circle with the center at the x equals 0, y equals 5 over 2 point right there on the y-axis. Finally, let's go ahead and solve the third one, or not solve it per se, but at least convert from polar to rectangular. Again, we're going to apply, employ the technique by multiplying both sides by r, again, because r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So we multiply the left side by r, so we get r squared equals 4, and let me write the r first, 4r times the cosine of theta 
plus 4r like that. So now we can see that the, right, the left side equation we can be converted to x squared plus y squared equals the left side equation, r times the cosine of theta is equal to x, so it becomes 4x plus 4 times r. Now we're going to move the 4x to the left side. So now we get x squared plus y squared minus 4x equals 4 times r. And now we're going to square both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get the left side, x squared plus y squared minus 4x quantity squared is equal to 16 r squared, and of course r squared can again be converted to x squared plus y squared, so this becomes x squared plus y squared minus 4x quantity squared is equal to 16 times x squared plus y squared, and then you probably could say, well I can algebraically manipulate that in many ways, but you can say, hey, this is good enough, there's a nice relationship between x and y, and I'm not particularly interested in solving that equation for either x or y, I can just leave it like this, which means that this equation here can be converted to this. Now, notice that this is much simpler than this equation right here. So sometimes there's all kinds of graphs which are much more easily represented in polar coordinates than they are in rectangular coordinates. And you can see sometimes there's a, re a need for being able to use polar coordinates versus rectangular. Sometimes you can see that this is a very simple representation of a circle, and here you can see that the, the uh, polar coordinates are rather complicated relative to the rectangular coordinates to represent the straight line in a vertical direction. So that's why it's easy, that's why it's necessary to be able to go back and forth because in some cases it's much easier to represent things in, in polar coordinates and sometimes it's much easier to represent things in rectangular coordinates. And that's why we need to be able to go back and forth between the two and that's how we do that.